Hi, my name is Trevor Klee, and this is the GRE critical reasoning process. Um, so just a little bit about the critical reasoning uh, section before I begin. Uh, a lot of people aren't really aware that this is a separate section uh, on the GRE because it's not really called out there. Uh, in, the, in the GRE books, it tends to be mixed in with reading comp. Um, so I guess, first of all, we need to identify which section this is. So in the verbal section, the critical reasoning section is if it asks you to weaken or boldface or find the assumption, it's basically any ones that ask you to like um, point out a specific uh, like piece of, uh, if they ask you to analyze an argument or analyze a logical statement or anything like that, anything having to do with logic, that's critical reasoning. Um, so, you know, obviously the first step to actually doing well in critical reasoning is realizing that it's not reading comp and it is in fact a separate section uh, and it has its own strategies, just like reading comp has its own strategies, just like the vocab sections have their own strategies. Um, so I'm gonna be going over your uh, strategy here or your process here for critical reasoning. Um, and by the way, before I begin, uh, I've taken all of these from my book on uh, critical reasoning in the GRE, which you can find at gumroad.com slash Trevor Klee. So if you're looking for a bunch more questions fully explained um, to really help you master this part of uh, the GRE, please check out my book at uh, gumroad.com slash Trevor Klee. All right, cool. Let's talk about our process here. So our process for any critical reasoning question, if we see something that says weaken or strengthen or assumption or whatever, uh, our first process is always going to be to find the conclusion. So uh, our conclusion is going to be something we can put therefore in front of. Um, so uh, if I say something like, I like ice cream because it's good, you know, therefore I like ice cream because it's good. So, and because is going to lead into our reasoning, which is our next thing. Uh, another way you can think about the conclusion is everything else supports it and it doesn't support anything else. So if, um, you know, uh, if it says, you know, I'm 12, I like ice cream because ice cream is good. I'm 12 is just sort of an irrelevant statement. I like ice cream is the conclusion because it's supported by the uh, next sentence. So everything else supports it and it shouldn't support anything else unless it's an intermediate conclusion. Um, and the last thing you can think of is you can disagree with it. So one thing you'll, uh, uh, one thing we'll go over is that in the argument, we're going to have our premises, which lead to our conclusions, right? Um, if we use our super classic, you know, argument example of premises, all men are mortal. Socrates is a man. Therefore, Socrates is mortal. All men are mortal. Premise, you can't disagree it. You can't disagree with it. All right. Cool. Now, uh, after we find the conclusion, then we uh, have to understand the reasoning. So that's, again, the stuff that we can put because or since in front of. Um, and we have to understand how the reasoning supports the conclusion. Uh, so this should be pretty straightforward once you find the conclusion. There needs to be, um, you know, uh, reasoning that supports it. That's what makes it a conclusion. Um, and like we have to really isolate the reasoning from the conclusion. How do the statements in the reasoning, how do the premises lead up to the conclusion? And then last up, once we understand that, we identify any gaps, if we can, between the reasoning and the conclusion, anything that might not support it. So maybe they'll switch around their word choices. Uh, or if it's a strengthened question, maybe there'll be huge gaps. Maybe you'll be like, I don't really get how the reasoning leads to a conclusion at all. So we want to identify the gaps. And then last up, we can answer the question. 
And how we answer the question is going to depend on the type of question, whether it's an assumption or weakened or um, a bold face sort of question. But uh, once we've done our three steps, then we can answer it. Notice, by the way, that all of these three steps are before you look at the uh, question or the answer choices. So, you know, I feel like a lot of people tend to just skim these because uh, they think they're like reading comp. They just skim these and then you can go to the answer choices. And that's sort of the opposite of what you should be doing. And reading comp, skimming is fine and critical reasoning, skimming is not. You really have to understand the um, stimulus or the initial paragraph, which is another reason why uh, I think it's strange that the GRE doesn't call this out as a separate section, because it really is. You really need a separate strategy for this. All right, cool. So that's our process. Conclusion, reasoning, gaps, answer the question. Uh, let's go into some examples, see what we can do here. All right, we've got example one here. Um, so if you say something that you have no that you have good reason to believe is not true, that is lying and lying is wrong. However, Jose had no good reason to believe that his prediction of rain was wrong, so it was not wrong for Jose to pay, predict rain. Here, this is our conclusion. We're even given a clue here with the word so, which is pretty close to therefore. So, therefore or so, it was not wrong to for Jose to predict rain. So that's our conclusion. Now, what's our reasoning? Our reasoning is Jose had no good reason to predict that his prediction of rain was wrong or to believe that his prediction of rain was wrong. And if you say something that you have good reason to believe is not true, that's lying and lying is wrong. So we've got a couple things going on here. So saying something you don't believe uh, is lying lying is wrong, Jose had no good reason to believe that his prediction of rain was wrong. So we can sort of assume here, Jose wasn't lying here. So it was not wrong for Jose to predict rain. So um, Jose, was not, uh, Jose was not lying, therefore it was not wrong for Jose to predict rain, if we really want to simplify this argument. Well, let's identify the gaps here. So here we have one reason uh, that things can be wrong, right? If things are lying, they can be wrong. But this conclusion here is pretty strong. It says it was definitely not wrong for Jose to predict rain. That's a gap, right? Because what if it was wrong for other reasons? What if Jose should have known that uh, he should, um, like what if Jose was predicting rain because he was trying to be, uh, I don't know, a jerk somehow. He was trying to ruin someone's wedding and be like, no, you can't ho hold it on that day. I think there'll be rain. Uh, so uh, this is a good uh, example of like, you know, this is a gap. So we want something to point out. If we're now going to weaken the argument, let's point out that um, Jose uh, could have been wrong for other reasons. Um, now you can also, the reason why we leave the question at the end is you can also imagine this as a strengthened question. A strengthened question would be the opposite. So weakened question points it out. Strengthened question would just say also, you know, there is no other reason that Jose, uh, you know, was, uh, morally wrong, something like that. So they're, they're pretty close to each other. So we don't really need to worry about the question until the end. All right. But now let's do this. Which following would most weaken the argument? Um, it is also wrong uh, to say things that would ruin um, someone's plans if you aren't positive they are true. Um, yeah, so that would pretty much point it out, right? So uh, the issue here, you know, if we're weakening the argument uh, is, you know, yeah, maybe it wasn't wrong for Jose to say that um, maybe he wasn't lying, but uh, it's he could have been wrong for another reason, right? It, he might not have had good no he might not have had a good reason to believe his prediction of rain was wrong, but if he didn't have a good reason to believe that his prediction of rain was correct, that could also be wrong. 
So A is pretty good here. B, Jose's prediction turned out to be false. No, uh, it's not he'd be wrong, like, he, we're, he'd not be morally wrong if he turned out to be false, right? Um, it's a question of whether what he believes, not in terms of what's actually true. Uh, time the moralist said this, Jose still could have been right in the, his prediction. Um, that would, I mean, vaguely strengthen it, but wouldn't really matter. Um, there's no objective way of proving whether uh, something is wrong. Uh, so this is just kind of coming close to disagreeing with part of our reasoning, which is that lying is wrong. You can't disagree with part of the reasoning. If it says lying is wrong, we have to accept lying is wrong. So don't disagree with the reasoning. Um, and then even if Jose had a good reason to believe his prediction was wrong, he still would have said it. I mean, maybe, but it doesn't, that, that doesn't count for what Jose did right now, right? Yeah, okay, maybe he would have done a wrong thing if he had the chance, but the question is, is this thing he just did wrong? And the answer is no, unless it's wrong for other reasons. And that's what A points out. All right, cool. So yeah, that was this first one. We identified our conclusion. We identified the reasoning. We found a gap between the reasoning and the conclusion. And then we picked an answer choice that sort of uh, pointed out that gap. All right, now we're going to do something a little different, but not that different, which is a boldface question. And the boldface questions are literally just asking you to identify the parts of the argument in the same way we've already been doing. So let's read the argument first. If a meteor is largest one that killed the dinosaurs were to strike the Earth tomorrow, uh, it would almost cause wide almost certainly caused widespread devastation. Uh, some people claim that this would not happen because in the event that a meteor were about to strike the Earth, humanity would be able to detect it. However, early detection is not enough. The meteor must be deflected, and there's currently no technology that could do such a thing. So here we have to um, uh, actually use our ability to identify the conclusion, which is something that the rest of the argument supports. Um, that doesn't support anything else. Um, and so our main conclusion for the argument is actually this first bold face. Why? Because the rest of the argument supports it, right? It would almost certainly cause widespread devastation. That's supported by early detection is not enough because the meteor must be deflected, right? It would cause widespread devastation because it must be deflected. And there's no current there's currently no technology that could do such a thing. So if we wanted to write this, we'd write, therefore, it would almost cause uh, widespread devastation, almost certainly cause widespread devastation, because the meteor must be deflected, and there's currently no technology that could do such a thing. So then what's this part in the middle? Well, we're not asked to identify it, but if we were, this is just detailing uh, an argument that sort of disagrees with the conclusion. Um, so that's what this middle sentence is doing, right? It's somehow trying to weaken the conclusion. This would not happen because. So therefore, it would not cause widespread devastation because humanity would be able to detect it. So that's uh, an argument in itself, an entire argument in itself, and that's one that goes against our argument. Okay, cool. Um, so now we've identified this. This is part of the reasoning. This is part of the conclusion. So let's talk about it. Um, so the parts in bold face play which of following rules in the argument. The first is the conclusion of the argument. Yes. Second is a claim that the argument is arguing against. No, the argument agrees. There's no technology that could do such a thing. Uh, first is the conclusion that the argument is arguing against. Nope. The first is the main conclusion of the argument. The second weakens an opposing conclusion. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, you know, so we weaken like the idea that like humanity would be able to, to, uh, to detect it. Or really we weaken the idea, sorry, not that humanity would be able to detect it. We weaken the idea that it would not cause widespread devastation because there's no de technology that could deflect it. So that's pretty good. First, an intermediate conclusion. Nope, the first is the main conclusion. First is a claim that if true supports the main conclusion. Nope. 
So C is the only one that works because C actually points out it's the main conclusion, which it is. They, uh, it's supported by other parts of the argument and it doesn't support anything else. All right, cool. So this is my uh, critical reasoning process. Um, hope you appreciated it and uh, I hope it's useful for you in your uh, GRE studying. Um, if you want to find more stuff on uh, the GRE, uh, you can visit my tutoring website, which is trevorcleetutor.com. And then again, if you're looking for books on the GRE, visit my Gumroad page, gumroad.com slash trevorclee. Um, and that's, uh, that's pretty much it for today. Stay tuned for more stuff on the GRE. And uh, hope you enjoy.